Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you may be the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I said we have our groups for both uh, teenagers, uh, or teenagers, and also children. Uh, they're going to go to their groups, and uh, the, young, the children are going to be outside, and the young people are going to be by the door. It is really hot, as you can tell, uh, and the heating is being on out there as well, so we're, we're trying to cool down a little bit. But let's take a moment to pray for our children and young people. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for our children and young people. We thank you that you walk with them. We thank you that you guide them. We thank you that you open their hearts to you. And we pray that as they come for a deep walk with you, that you will speak to them through all that has been prepared. And we thank you for our leaders and for the preparation and the time that they have been uh, they have put into these groups. And we just pray that you will use them now to bless them. Amen. 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 I invite uh, the teenagers to go that way and to the we are going to uh, come to time for worship and, and praise God before we have our reading. Uh, we're going to sing and worship through two songs. Uh, the Lion and the Lamb is coming on the clouds. Every knee shall bow down and what a beautiful name it is. So let's stand and worship God.
can't stop you because you are Lord and your name is in everything. And your name is beautiful in all we are. And we come to praise you now. All we are and all we have. What a beautiful name.
he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be made in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. As I said, I, uh, we are celebrating uh, the ascension, the movement um, of the next phase of God's ministry. I don't know if any of you watched things like Britain got, Britain's Got Talent um, or uh, Eurovision. Uh, we were watching Eurovision last night at all. Uh, or any of those shows where there's judges involved. Uh, because there's always a moment in those type of shows. Uh, we obviously uh, run to a talent every Sunday, uh, every Saturday, Eurovision last night. You know, we, we are into those type of things. And uh, there's always a moment. Uh, the moment is that it goes from the power of the judges to the public vote. Uh, I don't know if you noticed last night, but the public vote gave Great Britain zero points, or nil one. Uh, uh, the judges gave us points, but uh, the, the public vote didn't. Um, and it's a movement. It's a movement from the judges to the public. It's a movement from those in control to us, to us taking over. And we get to decide who stays or who goes, or, um, or who wins or who doesn't. And if we're really invested in it, we then start talking about it, don't we, to our friends. We, we are in the, uh, the water cooler moments or out in the public, and we're talking about that, what are we watching, who is the best act, uh, should Switzerland have won, should England have got more, uh, should Holland have been uh, booted out of the competition, all those controversies. It might not be what we're talking about football or other things, but we go and talk about those things. And today we are celebrating Jesus' ascension. Uh, albeit, as I say, a couple of days late, and that this moves our focus from the, everything being done for us through the power of the Spirit, for us doing everything. It moves, it's a movement. The ascension is a movement from Jesus to us, from the judges, to us, to the public. It's moving from Jesus being here on earth to the New Testament, personal encounters with Jesus and doing things in his name. I don't know what you would identify as the climax or completion of Jesus' life and ministry. It's not a trivial question. Because some will say that the resurrection is the end of Jesus' ministry, where actually if we fast forward a week to Pentecost and listen to Peter's Pentecost speech, the climax of what God actually has done in Jesus is not the resurrection, but Jesus being exalted to the right hand of the Father during the ascension. In support of this, Peter cites Psalm 110, which, if you didn't know, is the most cited psalm in the New Testament, with its imagery of the Lord Messiah taking his seat at the right hand of the Father. And that's what the ascension is. It's the end of Jesus' life and ministry here on earth, and him going to take his seat at the right hand of the Father. It's not just Peter that highlights this as the end of his ministry, but Paul also does in his uh, great hymn in Philippians 2. Um, um, he actually skips over the resurrection and moves straight from Jesus' death on the cross to his being exalted at the right hand, at the highest place. 
And so the ascension is Jesus being taken physically from being seen by us, by the disciples, by the individuals, and, and those collectively. All those resurrection stories that we've explored on the road to Emmaus, uh, with Dan and Thomas, with last week the invitation at the beach, the uh, disciples physically seeing him. It's the end of that, going up to heaven, and to be moving to like we see him today, through personal revelations, through movements of the Spirit, through us talking and speaking about it. And we see that through the New Testament. We studied Acts last year, and what did we see? We saw people having personal encounters with Jesus, and when they had those personal encounters with Jesus, what did they do? They spoke about it. They went and talked and spoke about it. And that's what happens. That will celebrate next week at Pentecost, the movement of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, we heard, told the disciples to go and pray and spend time in prayer. And that's what they were doing. And that's why we have the movement of thy kingdom come, the prayer movement, to pray from ascension to Pentecost. To follow the disciples' example of praying until the Holy Spirit came and that is. As I say, it's the movement of the judge's hand to the public vote, from Jesus to us, from Jesus being here and doing things to passing on the good news through us. I know that for some of you, the ascension is a really key and important part in your faith. It's a critical part in all of our faiths. It's marked in the Christian calendar, as I've said, and as I've read in the Anglican Church. It's a holy day, a special day, that was celebrated last Thursday. But I don't know if you get it or not. I don't know if it is part of your faith. I know for me, for many years, I actually struggled with the idea of the ascension. Not with the idea of it, but why it was so celebrated. I didn't get it. I have to admit. Um, I, I spent a lot of time going, it's a Thursday service, why, why do we do it? Why, why do we have to go on a Thursday and have a holy service um, and understand it? Um, and I don't know if you are like me, who struggled with that, or one of those people who actually is such a key part and a movement in your faith that you have to celebrate it. Why do we celebrate? Why is it? And as I've said, we celebrate it because it is that movement, it's that key movement of Jesus going to uh, fill the scriptures, the revelations in Daniel 7, of going up to the right hand, of coming on the clouds to the Father in heaven and taking his seat. And we get to the point of the Holy Spirit coming, of doing what it is. It's Jesus completing his earthly ministry. It's the moment where everything changes. It moves from him being on earth as corporate, being seen by the disciples and by many, to him grooming personal revelations through us. We receive through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, individually and corporate revelations of Jesus moving in our lives. And it's the stories that we tell. It's the things because we hear that we go and tell. So the ascension is important. It's important in the New Testament. It's important in us. And it means four things. It means firstly, authority. Jesus is enthroned with the Father because of the ascension that the Lamb who was slain is seated with the one who is on the throne and shares the worship as we see in Revelation 4. It is the ascension that all authority that has been given to Jesus and this authority means that Stephen is confident that he is held by a higher power even to the point of death in his final vision as he is stoned in the backs of Jesus of being ascended in Daniel 7. So it's important because it shows the authority of Jesus. One, 
It shows the humanity of Jesus. In the incarnation, God entered into human existence. In the ascension, that human humanity is taken up into the presence of God. We have a high priest interceding for us who is not unable to sympathize with everything that we are going through. Those challenges, those dilemmas, those sufferings, those weaknesses, and also those joys. So we have Jesus as authority. The ascension brings authority and it brings humanity. The recognition that Jesus was human and he understands us and what we're going through. And thirdly, it gives responsibility. The ascension marks the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, as I said, and now the responsibility is handed on to us. To continue Jesus' work, powered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not distant or indifferent, but he has delegated and passed on the matter to us. And finally, the ascension is important because it brings fidelity. Jesus ascending into the clouds to heaven uh, promised that he will return in the Son of One. That's why he return, his return is never called a second coming in the New Testament because it's not paired with his first coming, the incarnation, but with the ascension. As God has put all things under his feet, one day his authority will be the authority de facto. His he says to the disciples, as he passes on the baton, as we've heard today, you will be known. You will go into the whole world and you will be known. And that's what the ascension is. The movement from Jesus to us. The baton passing on. That we will be known. That we will go to the ends of the earth through and in the power of the Holy Spirit to further God's kingdom through Jesus, through the Spirit. And that's why we celebrate. That's why we celebrate Ascension. That's why it's such a big and important festival. The moment when Jesus returns to heaven, we, we take up the mantle. Not me, but all of us take up the mantle. All of us take up the baton. We grasp it, and that's what we do. If we are to grow St. Gabriel's, we all take up the mantle. We all take up the baton to pass on that way for the next generations. We all take up the baton from Jesus to share our faith out in the community and to the people we know and love. We take on the baton to be filled by the Holy Spirit, to be known in all the world. We have a place in this community as a church, but we are all to be known as the church, not just the one with the common. Jesus said to his disciples, you will be my witnesses throughout the world because of what he has done through you. And we are to be the witnesses throughout our lives because of what Jesus has done through and in us. Because we have witnessed Jesus in corporate revelations, in private revelations, in prayer, in the Bible, through church, through interacting with each other, we have to go out into the whole world and tell of what Jesus has done, what Jesus is doing, and what Jesus will do. I'm going to leave it there because next week is the, we celebrate Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And spoiler alert, it's sort of the same sermon because what does Peter do? He stands and he proclaims what Jesus has done. And we stand and we proclaim what Jesus is doing through us and in us. We praise Jesus, the first only Son, 
Praise Him when I'm doubting, praise Him when I'm enjoying, uh, when I'm enjoying. And because we praise Him in through all those times, people then ask and say, why? And we say, because of Jesus. Because of God. Because of what Jesus is and to us. And that's why we celebrate the ascension. The movement from Jesus to us and us to us. Because that pattern then gets passed. If you've ever been in a relay race, you receive it and you give it, don't you? And that's what we did. We passed the pattern. From Jesus to us, from us to us, the ascension story. So let's pray. Jesus, the ascension didn't end everything. You going in to be with your Father in heaven, it didn't end there. It continued. It continued through the saints over the many years and generations as we received the baton and the faith. So now it continues with us. So Jesus, we thank you we thank you for the people in the past who have passed on the faith to us. For the revelations we have received, from the revelations we have heard, and for all we know about you. And we pray today that you will continue your mission through us. Through us as individuals and through us as the Church of St. Kate. Give us the words as you gave the disciples in the stories of the New Testament. Give us the words to speak. Inspire us through your Holy Spirit as a church to go and tell. Give us the words when people ask. Give us the actions to show your love. And as we go into this day, into this week, and into the coming days and months. Help us to pass that pattern on to the next person. Help us to praise you and show your love in all we do and say. Amen. Amen. Before we move to the table um, and that movement of peace, we are going to pray. We're going to take a moment just to pause and pray. We're going to take a moment of silence um, and I will just say a, a subject and I invite you to pray for that subject. So let's take a moment of silence and
we also pray for the conflicts that reign in our lives. Lord, we turn to pray for those who are sick, those who are waiting for uh, results and tests, and those who wake at night because of worry. We especially lift to you now, Sue Hudson. Lord, we thank you for the people who have cared for us throughout our lives. And we turn to pray for those who are carers, either on a daily basis or those who care for others through their profession, such as nurses and care workers. And Lord, we know that you take people to be in glory with you. And we pray for those who are in the morning this day. We pray and lift up, especially Sarah and her family. We pray for Simon and his family. We pray for Julia's niece and her family. We pray for all those there who are grieving the leader. And Lord, as we bring our time of prayer to a close, we offer moments of private prayer situations that we know about, the people we hold in our hearts. <coughs> Help us, Lord, to live this day to the full, sharing Christ in all we do. We are going to move towards the table to the bread and the wine. And as we do that, we meet each other in the Lord's name. So may the peace of the Lord always be with you.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the grace. It is right to praise you, Father, the Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. We, when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. Basically, the second part. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave thanks, and broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. Likewise. Let me just get on that. So likewise, at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, we pray that you'll send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us, the body and blood of your dear Son. So as I say, it taught us so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Send us out in the power of your spirit, 
to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Well, just um, before we finish, we have some notices, but um, we also, I'm guessing, have some things to report back um, from uh, our children's and youth group. So, uh, Jenny, you go first. And then...
you go in the blessing of God Almighty, you follow the Son and the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Please join us for fellowship and refreshment.